Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com, BitamountLive.com, and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is uh, June 4th, 2021, and uh, this is the uh, preview of the Roger Caverne Moving On Sale Part 2. As you recall, the Part 1 uh, happened a little over a month ago, did fantastically well. Uh, this is an unreserved sale, which is very unusual uh, these days, especially in the Asian art world. The entire auction is being, everything's being sold without reserves. They've applied very modest uh, estimates. As we saw in the last sale, uh, the majority of things went over their high estimates and sometimes by multiples of five and six and eight and ten times as high. Uh, and it's just a message to the sell to the buyers out there that he, he plans on selling everything. And this is a good-looking sale. And if you come over to bitamount.com and you want to see the catalog after this, you want to peruse it, uh, as, as many of you know, you scroll down here. We have added a red box here for the catalogs right here. And you click it, it'll bring you over to this page. And the first catalog on the row is here. If it, In the future, you can always, of course, use the search bar um, for any catalog on here, and it'll, it'll dig it out for you. And uh, this is what this one looks like. And uh, on the cover of the catalog, interestingly, they have uh, a series of catalogs that Roger himself did on exhibitions and shows and so forth over the years. Uh, always great things. This sale, like the first sale, everything is being sold without reserve, uh, which is absolutely uh, wonderful uh, because unreserved uh, sales of Asian art, uh, there hasn't been, been one with high quality uh, material in it like this for a number of years other than the first one that he did last month that did uh, blew through the estimates did extremely well and we're going to walk through some of the pieces uh, the sale is particularly heavy in uh, uh, jades so if you're a jade buyer this is a sale for you uh, some very good cinnabar lacquer uh, and uh, lots of figural groups jade figures bronze figures carved wooden lacquer figures uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bounty of them and uh, some very fine watercolors sets of watercolors Chinese export paintings. Uh, there's a very nice reverse painting on glass of a Chinese lady, uh, and, and 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 some nice bits of furniture. So it's it's a good mix, and the estimates are all very low, uh, very much encouraging of bidding. And uh, let's get started. Let's take a look. Um, this is this is the uh, home page at Bonhams where the items are. You can go over there, of course, and peruse them. And as you can see, there's, it starts out with some nice early uh, bronzes and jades, and then moves on from there. So let's take a look. One of the things that was in here, and this is the kind of thing I, I personally like a great deal. It's a, it's a, it's a mid-Qing dynasty, you know, 1790 to 1820, something like that, um, hanging lacquered panel. And uh, this is a wonderful thing. If you, if you, if you, if you want to decorate your home, have things on the walls that are evocative and interesting, this is a wonderful thing. And it is, it is a boat scene, of course. There's a child up on the roof, a woman manning the rudder and so forth. They've got the banner out. There's a pairing up here of, um, uh, uh, of a mandarin ducks, which are uh, symbolic in Chinese culture because uh, the, 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 these ducks, uh, wood ducks, they, 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 um, the mandarin ducks, they, they mate for life. So it's a symbol of marital fidelity. And here you have this very happy family sitting around their table, um, uh, having a meal and so forth. And uh, just wonderfully done. Beautifully done. And the estimate on it, this is a fairly large panel, too. It's uh, uh, 37 by 19 inches. So it, it would make a wonderful thing on a wall. Two to th uh, 3,000 pound or 2,800 to $4,300 estimate. Uh, just a great thing. And then over here, there's some very fine cloisonne. Uh, this is a chin lung ear example, 18th century. It's a ritual bowl. They call these daos or dews. And uh, it is in beautiful condition. The gilding on it is exceptional. The shape is great. The potting is fabulous. It's, it's sort of This upper section is very reminiscent of Han bronzes um, uh, that were made with these loop handles, but they didn't have this elongated stem on the bottom. They would have a much shorter base ending right about there. But this is the, 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 where that sh this shape originated from. And uh, $2,800 to $4,300. Uh, it, will, it, will, it will go through that estimate, I'm assuming. And then this, this is an absolutely interesting vase. Uh, it's done with Shao characters all over it. Very unusual coloring. Very unusual coloring and patterning all over it. It's sort of a fabric pat pattern on it or a lattice pattern. 
uh, very neatly painted, beautifully done, and then with Shao characters for longevity uh, scattered over the body and then filled in with uh, red-headed cranes, which are symbolic in both Chinese and Japanese culture. But uh, a beautifully, beautifully done vase. Uh, estimate five to eight thousand uh, pounds, or seventy-one hundred to eleven thousand dollars. It's Yongshen period. This is not a nineteenth-century one. It's an old one, and it is good size. It is sixteen inches in height. All right, that's a, a very pretty, pretty, pretty vase. And then on to this eighteenth-century uh, Yongshen period uh, Chinese export Beijing enamel or Peking enamel. Um, a r r r r ruby back dish of uh, European uh, figures. Uh, absolutely beautifully done, and the enameling on it is, is in excellent condition. Uh, I love the peaches with the insects on top, and then you have this nice European co uh, couple in, in uh, uh, traditional dress of the period, first half of the 18th century. And interestingly, they're sitting in the garden, and they have a, 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 they're, they're going through a pile of uh, 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 ch uh, Chinese jade books wrapped in silk and so forth. But, but and he has sort of a devilish look on his face. I like that a lot. It's very pretty. And an estimate of 1400 to $2,100. But a beautiful example, and it looks to be in pristine condition. As always, always ask for a condition report because you, you don't know. But but overall, that looks really great. And then there's this. It's a, it's a this is a pretty rare set, rare um, a pair of rare gilt decorated blue enamel group stem cups, covers, and stands. Um, very beautifully done, uh, cobalt ground with lots of gilding on it, and all of the gilding looks to be really in outstanding condition. You don't see any wear around the edges uh, all the way through. It looks to be in very fine condition, meticulously drawn, uh, just very elegant. And, 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 and you see sets like this also in Europe. It's 18th century, probably Qinlong period, and estimated modestly, 850 to $1,100 U.S. or six to 800 pounds. And then moseying along over to here, a Chin Lung seven character mark and of the period, um, cloisonne vase with unusually large um, uh, Fu Lion mask handles on it. Uh, just uh, they're enormous, uh, but, but but they really give it a sense of a sense of power the way they're applied to it. The the uh, cloisonne work, of course, is quite excellent as it should be, and it is mark and period. And the mark is on the I believe this is on the base of the piece. There it is, cut right into it, the way it should look. Uh, Eighty-five hundred to eleven thousand dollar estimate, and this piece measures uh, about four inches tall. And uh, a number of months ago, we saw some of these little vases like this, and they brought a lot of money. They did very well. These small, very fine cloisonne Chinlung vases, in particular, um, the emperor was a big fan of those. And Chinese paintings. Uh, this is uh, from the Chinese Export School. school. Uh, they conservatively date it to the first half of the uh, 19th century, but generally speaking, um, they, were, they, were, they were typically done around uh, uh, 1790, late 1790s to about 1820. Um, sort of in that range. These are beautifully done. These are beautiful interior scenes. Uh, are very, very lovely. And if you notice here how they did the little balustrade running around the area, it's extremely three-dimensional. Uh, whoever did this had a real sense of three-dimensional painting. And you have the lady over here coming in, and you have these big blue glazed pots with flowers in them. And then you have the gentleman entering um, out under the veranda with more flowers in the background and some script and so forth. And they're dressed obviously in sort of you know casual wear or daily wear um, uh, outfits. Uh, the, and these are big size too. These are fairly large. These are 20 by 15 inches, excluding the frames. So they're nice sizes, uh, very very decorative. If you if you if you're room for something in your house like this, these are fabulous. And uh, 4,300 to 7,000 uh, dollars, but really really well done, exceptional. And they look like they're in pristine condition. And then on to this, another set of Chinese school paintings. And the, and the figure of the, of the seated man is interesting, but the, uh, the figure of the lady with the horse is absolutely fabulous. And I want to show this to you because, because the, the, the woman, the, 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 the feminine aspect of the, of, the, of the woman is carried due to the horse. It's, uh, the, 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 the horse is very feminine looking, <clears throat> and the woman is wearing these long flowing robes and so forth, standing in front of the horse, and the horse's mane is flowing in the same general manner, uh, beautifully done, and then they have it draped out over the ground. 
this is a very elegant painting, and uh, it's 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 part of that lot. Uh, the big the big the ancestral portrait is an ancestral portrait. It didn't excite me too much, but the the portrait of the woman I think is absolutely elegant, and uh, eight fifty to eleven hundred dollars. I think I think the portrait of the woman um, on the watercolor alone is worth probably two or three thousand U.S. Uh, anyway, it's just beautifully done, beautifully done. And then this, this is an interesting lot. Two um, late Qing Dynasty bronzes, one inlaid with gold, uh, parcel gilt on it, uh, probably done in the you know post second half, around 1850 or so. But it's a pair of them. Nice looking bronzes, beautiful patinas on both of them. This one has, 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 has some uh, gold inlay into it with these uh, stylized archaistic uh, uh, elements. And then the mask up top and so forth. Very nicely done. And then this, uh, uh, also done in the archaistic manner, but beautifully cast. And um, estimated reasonably, 1700 to $2,100 for the two of them. And these are not tiny bronzes. These are not little. These are a foot tall and 13 inches tall, respectively. All right. So they're, they're good size, and they look to be in excellent condition. And, the, you know, the, the, the estimate in there basically of around 900 to $1,000 a piece, which is which I think is well under the market, uh, to say the least. And then this is this is something. This is a, a set of six botanical paintings, all done um, in the in the 19th century, probably 1830 to 1850. Some of them in there, judging by the work. Um, and these would be absolutely great if you got them got them and framed them all up. Beautifully done, beautiful colors, lovely shading, uh, just all the way through. And uh, each one of them, of course, is a different different flower. And and they did these albums. Um, sometimes they did them, and they would identify. Like I, years ago, I had one that was all all the known a, a whole bunch of known poisonous plants in China, that I, I sold to a collector who was who was into botany, and uh, he also collected Chinese art. But this is this this is a beautiful set. And again, very reasonable estimate: twenty one hundred to twenty eight hundred dollars, or you know, they're only saying three or four hundred dollars a piece for them, which I think is very very reasonable. They should go well beyond that. <clears throat> and then this, the set of uh, Chinese school uh, watercolors. These are pith paintings. There's 12 in this set, and it's all seashells, um, all kinds of different seashells. Uh, so if you, if you have a house near the ocean or something, these are amazing. Um, uh, all the different uh, sh seashells, you have uh, the, these twist shells, starfish, and on and on and on. And the colors are beautiful. And... Uh, they, this should do very well. Estimated again modestly at twenty-six hundred to thirty-four hundred dollars, or a few hundred dollars each is the estimate. Um, if, but if you want them, you know, spend five or six hundred, seven hundred bucks a piece on them. To have a set like this framed would make a, would make an amazing room. Especially, like I said, especially if you live near the ocean or you like the ocean. Uh, very, very beautiful. And then over here, this is, a, 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 I think, a, an underestimated rarity in the export world. Export porcelain has been a little soft lately. We noticed from the Sotheby's sale that they had, I think it was Sotheby's had the uh, Chinese export sale in London. Didn't do very well. They had a lot of things buy in. More than half the sale didn't sell, I suspect, the way it looked. But this is something you don't see very often. These are Chinese um, Famille Rose paintings on, on porcelain of t European children. That's... Um, See if we can bring this in a little bit here. Hold on. There. The quality is just exceptional. Very uh, uh, much mid-18th century, uh, the children outside playing and having fun, and uh, uh, very typical of how the uh, Chinese artists rendered Europeans. And uh, it's a pair in these beautiful uh, gilt uh, frames, and uh, uh, the gesso, gesso carved frames. But I love this one on the bottom, especially the little the boy with the little girl holding hands, walking along. And these kids look like they're going in for dinner for the night or going into somebody's house and the mother in the corner encouraging them to come in as well. Just a, a, a nice, charming scene. And uh, estimated at 8500 to $11,000. And the paintings measure, uh, what are they, about a foot, aren't they? Yeah, um, uh, uh, 13 and a half inches. But beautifully done, beautiful set, and unusual. And if you think back, you're not going to be remember seeing any plaques like this in, in quite a long time. If you some of you may have never seen them before, um, at a glance they look like English watercolors. 
that, that and interesting. And then over here to this uh, probably Jai Jing period, late Ming dynasty, blue and white vase, beautiful shape though. Uh, it's not a very early period for Ming, obviously, it's late Ming. Um, and uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the Ming stuff done in the Jai Jing and Wanli period, there was some deterioration, the potting sometimes was a little off, that kind of thing. But this thing is beautifully shaped. It has the element base uh, that you saw in much earlier uh, Yuan Dynasty, uh, blue and white, and the, 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 the leaves and flowers are painted sort of loosely sprinkled over it uh, with this central scene of it looks like a couple of scholars. But the shaping and potting of this vase is really beautiful, and it's around 12 or 13 inches tall. 13 and 3 quarters. It's almost 14 inches tall. Good size pot. Very low estimate. 1400 to $2,100 U.S. Should double that or triple it and worth it. Just a, a great thing. And then this. This is one of my favorite pieces of furniture I've seen in a while. It's a Kangxi period uh, lacquered uh, 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 Ruyi uh, set up uh, chair with this beautiful enameled back, uh, beautiful lacquered back all the way down. I love, I love the arm the armrests or the back support, how they sp spray out like this, creating sort of a Ruyi head. And then the, the uh, legs and so forth. And it's interesting because the, the leg structure here is very much like English furniture. Uh, there's some real English influence in the, in, the, in, the, in the construction of the base of this chair. Uh, but, but beautifully done. And a lot of the paint is still on it, which is a miracle. Because a lacquer on a wooden chair that's used is, is, is uh, generally uh, worn to bits. Uh, and this one it looks to be in great shape and has this scrolling back um, uh, backrest on it. Beautiful thing, estimated at $4,300 to $7,100. I think that is very, very reasonable, and it's an extremely unusual form of chair. Uh, very, very unusual, but uh, very beautiful. Very beautiful thing. And then this, the Kangxi period, probably Kangxi period. They dated it sort of as 17th to 18th century. But when these compressed form um, uh, incense burners typically with these, um, the, these uh, sort of rose head effects running around upper and lower and, and rather compressed in form and wide, uh, uh, generally uh, from the Kangxi period when they're shaped like this. It's six and a quarter inches wide and uh, looks to be in great shape. It has a nice patina and has a very low estimate. Again, 1400 to $2,100 or 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. And on to this, the Fangu Cloisonne vase. This is another great thing. Uh, 17th century, uh, 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 well, it could, it could be uh, almost uh, early Kangxi or late Ming, but uh, beautiful, the coloring makes me think it's probably uh, uh, early Kangxi period. But beautifully done. What a wonderful piece of cloisonne. Uh, finely worked, nice handles on it all the way around. I like the galloping horses around the base, of course, because I love seeing horses in Chinese art. And uh, this is a very handsome big piece. And uh, again, based on an archaistic form. Uh, and uh, let's see, what size was this? This was pretty good size, too. Yeah, it was 15 inches tall. 8500 to $11,000 should get there pretty easily. I think there was one in a sale not long ago that brought in the, in, in the, in the low 20s. And then here to this, the uh, Lohan on the elephant. Uh, there was some speculation that they might think it was Kalika, but typically Kalika is is a, is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is considered to be more of a female goddess, though there were male male later male versions. But uh, uh, neither here nor there. Um, uh, very nicely done, great patina, and I loved how they styled the elephant down here at the bottom. He almost has a head like a bird, uh, but beautifully done. Nice beadwork um, uh, running up around uh, 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 the, uh, the bridle on the elephant and so forth. And uh, you, the feet are beautifully articulated. And he's holding a scroll and reading it. Uh, just a lovely little bronze. And this is fairly small. This is uh, seven inches high. But great patina, good condition, and a $1,000 to $1,700 estimate. And it is also probably Kung Shi period. And then over here to this, a silver stem cup, uh, Tang Dynasty. And uh, what I liked about this cup a lot was the shape, the shape, the scale, and the proportions. Because generally, when you have a when you have a when you have a big rounded body like this, uh, sort of a cauldron shape, and then you put a small base on it, they look so out of balance. And and the silversmith who did this work in the, in, in the Tang Dynasty really figured out proportion and scale and made it work somehow. The way the the foot flares in. It goes around, goes up, and then the, then the cup that holds the bowl, uh, it, was, it was all scaled and proportioned very, very nicely, and it looks natural. It, it looks like it's supporting a cauldron, 
which is really ne really nice. And uh, estimated at $2,800 to $4,300. If you ever want to own a nice piece of tang, this is, so, this is a small wine cup. It's only a couple of inches. It's under, just a little under three inches tall, but highly unusual. And it looks to be in nice condition. And if you buy it, don't polish it. All right. And then on here, the rare, this is a, a fairly rare thing of, of a Ming Dynasty official or late Yuan period uh, uh, carved in... Um, Probably, what is this? Uh, do they say what the stone is? Da, 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 they don't. They just say it's stone. I suspect it's probably limestone. Uh, but at any rate, beautifully carved. And what's nice about this one is that a lot of these faces, a lot of these carved heads, they have damage to them often. You'll see your chunk missing off of the, off of the nose or the eyes or, you know, things like this. Damage is always present somewhere on these uh, most of the time. And on this one, you only see a little bit of a loss at the bottom of one ear, which makes it nice. The surface on it looks great. And... Uh, it's estimated at $2,800 to $4,300. I think that's pretty reasonable. And it, it uh, uh, stand uh, measures, uh, with the stand, the whole piece measures about a foot tall. But beautifully done. Beautifully done in early, early, late yawn, yawn, early Ming. And then this, he, he, Erkshen, uh, a pair of carved jades, 17th century, they say. They, I, I don't know. It could be 17th, if they're out of the Kangxi period, and they could also be early 18th century, uh, as, as many of you know. It's, these are so hard to date. They measure four and three-eighths inches tall each. And uh, the, the, on, the, on the left, he's carrying a, uh, a Ling Bai basket uh, here, and the other fellow is carrying uh, a string with coins on them. His cash symbols on them. But the, what's really nice is that the facial expressions on the two figures are absolutely beautifully done. The eyes are swept way back. The brow is nicely done. And the eyelids are heavy over it. And the other one here is this sort of charming smile looking down, you know, sort of humbly, um, but very happy fellow. And uh, nicely done hair. You notice how well done the hair is and the coloring of the stone, this greenish white. Uh, is quite attractive, and the details, the little things like the lifting of the robe where the feet come out and so forth, uh, uh, so sort of like they're rocking on their heels. It's it's all a, a, a very charming package, and um, should do pr they should do well beyond this estimate. I I happen to have had a set of these a number of years ago, and I and I think we I think we had them oh, 15 years ago, and I think we sold them um, on eBay of all places for about twenty three thousand dollars. And that was years ago. So I suspect these will do quite well. They're very desirable. And uh, we'll see how it goes. And then lastly, I wanted to share this, the, the Sudhana, which is a, uh, it's an Indian uh, uh, deity that went on a quest into China to seek uh, perfection and so forth. And in uh, and, and, and this one, he's, he's illustrated, the figure is illustrated as obviously being very Chinese. But the original was, was Hindu. And uh, here's the uh, very, very finely worked piece. Uh, nicely done lacquer. This is uh, early, early work. All the way down the folds and the robe are beautifully done. There's even a tassel popping out from underneath, which I think is terrific. And uh, they have it up as 17th century, uh, probably uh, I don't know, mid 16, not Ming, but 16, I'm, I'm just going to guess 1660s to 1690, somewhere in there. Could be wrong, but but early. These are very hard to date, but uh, with a forty-three hundred to seventy-one hundred dollar estimate. But this is good size. This thing is fifteen inches tall. He's not a little five-inch tall carving. And sometimes it's hard to read how big this is. This thing is over a foot tall, well over a foot tall, and uh, looks to be in excellent condition. So uh, you got an estimate of forty-three hundred to seventy-one hundred dollars. I think that's quite reasonable uh, given its condition, the face, and so forth. I think it'll probably go through that. Uh, it's just a, if you like carv carvings and lacquer work, uh, it's quite a wonderful thing. And there's a lot of other stuff. I'm, I don't know, I'm not going to go through every piece in here. There's some very nice lacquer. Um, there's some very good, ja there's one very fine Japanese lacquer stacking box uh, and so forth. So uh, check it out, uh, do it over the weekend. And uh, you still have time to get in touch with them if, if you have questions and you want to bid on the sale. But uh, this is a nice opportunity to acquire some very attractive things. And you have a shot, at least, of, uh, of, of getting yourself a, good, a very good buy. Because, as I said at the beginning, there's no reserve on any of it, which is a great thing. So that's it. We're also doing our regular video today. That will be up alongside this one. Have a wonderful weekend. And um, we'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.